years, there have been huge changes in the way CKD is managed. We know today that the stage of CKD you are in is not what really matters. Science proves that even those in stage 4 and 5 can improve. They can stop the progression. What this means is that you should never lose hope. We know for a fact today that CKD can be stopped in all the stages. But I am not gonna tell you that this is easy. Look, there are deficiencies, comorbidities, metabolic problems, and we need to take care of them if we want our GFR to improve. This is why today I want to share with you the most up-to-date info about the vitamins and essential nutrients that, according to science, will make the biggest difference in stage 3, 4 and 5. These are the top 5 most underrated nutrients. All of the entries of today's video will greatly help you. But most people, and this includes doctors, don't know enough about them. Let's start with one of the most underrated vitamins. Our number 5 is a little known nutrient that can be used to lower phosphorus levels for controlling cholesterol, for lowering pressure and according to recent study, to prevent AKI. I'm talking about niacinamide, a form of vitamin B3. Vitamin B3 in all its forms is crucial for protecting the kidneys. Having enough B3 in the body is needed for good health. Niacin helps to convert nutrients into energy, create cholesterol and fats, create and repair DNA, and exert antioxidant effects. One role of niacin is to release prostaglandins or chemicals that help your blood vessels widen, improving blood flow and reducing blood pressure. B3 binds to phosphorus and can be used with or without the addition of traditional phosphate binders to decrease the levels of this dangerous mineral. Hyperphosphatemia is very common and very dangerous in the advanced stages of CKD. It makes GFR decline faster and is linked to heart problems. So you really don't want the level of this vitamin to be low. And you can get niacin either from foods or supplements. It occurs naturally in many foods, including greens, quinoa, muesli, wild rice, and corn. Question, who should supplement this vitamin? Today, most people suffering from CKD are recommended to supplement all the vitamins of the B group. Now, the problem with vitamin B3 is that most people are either supplementing too little of this vitamin or supplementing the wrong form. What you get from most supplements is niacin. What you actually want is a form of vitamin B3 called niacinamide. So if you supplement B vitamins, and most people with CKD are recommended to take all water-soluble vitamins, including vitamin C and all the vitamins of the B group, make sure you are taking niacinamide. Niacinamide has one unique property. It seems to protect the kidneys from the risk of acute kidney injury, AKI in short. Researchers recently discovered that people who suffered from AKI in a hospital setting had low levels of neotinamide adenine dinucleotide or NAD in short. NAD is a coenzyme central to metabolism. Supplementing niacinamide is, according to this study, a safe way of improving the levels of this coenzyme, which in turn will protect from AKI. One more reason to make sure your levels for this vitamin are not too low. When supplementing it, the daily intake for this vitamin is around 20 mg. Next, a supplement that's not underrated at all and that's still making headlines today for its incredible ability of protecting the precious filtering organs of our bodies. I'm talking about omega-3 fatty acids. While no one in their right mind will tell you that omega-3s are useless, there has been debate in the scientific community about this supplement. But a very recent study is probably finally going to be settling this debate. So what's new about omega-3s? A very large study was just published earlier this year. 
This is a pooled analysis of 19 cohorts. Decades of data from 25,570 participants in 12 different countries was examined by researchers and they came to a rock solid conclusion. They examined this huge number of participants for more than a decade. Of them, 4,944 developed CKD during the study period. Now the interesting part. Researchers divided this huge number of participants in two groups. First group was getting higher levels of omega-3s. Second group was getting a lot less omega-3s. Now the amazing part. The group with higher omega-3 intake had a whooping 13% lower risk of developing CRF during the 13 years of the study. So yeah, as I was saying, it's a rock-solid conclusion of huge importance for us. Also because this study is telling us that in people with already diagnosed CKD, higher levels of omega-3s can greatly slow down the decline of kidney function. One explanation of this incredible result may be the effects omega-3s have on proteinuria. Now, managing proteinuria is probably the most important factor in reversing the decline of GFR and omega-3s can help. Remember that proteinuria level will basically tell you if your GFR is going to improve or decline in the future. Now, this study is also pointing out the fact that may change the way we eat. Researchers also pointed out that these benefits in terms of slow down progression of CAD are only going to happen when someone is getting their omega-3s from fish, not from veggies, unfortunately. Question, are omega-3s from plants useless? In my video, I often praised the benefits of foods such as walnuts, chia seeds, and flax seeds. These are some of the best plant-based sources of omega-3s. Now, there is a difference between the omega-3s you can get from plants and the omega-3s you get from fish. The second type is way more bioavailable. And as this study is pointing out, you really need omega-3s from fish if you want the benefits, which means supplements in the case of most CKD sufferers. But that doesn't mean that you should stop eating flaxseed or walnuts. You see, plant-based omega-3 fatty acids have still plenty to offer. We are still talking about very healthy foods here. Okay guys, if you are not supplementing this essential fatty acid yet, I really encourage you to get informed about it. And I've talked more in depth about how to take omega-3s in my video up here and also down in description. Number 3. A new trend that most people should be already taking. Now, since today's video is about underrated nutrients, it's now time to take a look at a nutrient that, according to the FDA, should be prescribed to a lot of CKD sufferers. But it's not the case, and most primary care providers are still not informed about this one. Let's see why. In the study I've mentioned in the beginning of the video, researchers outline a series of complications that must be addressed in order for someone in stage 3 or 4 to stop or even reverse the decline of GFR. Now, one of the most important complications of CKD and probably the most overlooked is anemia. Fact. According to recent statistics, up to 72.8% of CKD sufferers also suffer from anemia. Of them, however, only 4% are receiving the appropriate attention. Now, this is extremely disconcerting to me because it means that the vast majority of those with CKD are suffering from a complication without getting the appropriate treatment. And this is a serious problem. Anemia makes kidney disease progress faster. Now even worse, most people with anemia are not even having their iron levels checked. Now if you are not being checked for iron levels and you have CKD, talk to your nephrologist as soon as possible. There are things that can be done to make you improve. What really helps with anemia? There is a common and cheap supplement that's been approved by the FDA to treat this dangerous complication. I know that your doctors are supposed to talk to you about this, but as we have seen, most people are not informed. I'm talking about L-carnitine. Fact, if you are in stage 4 or 5 kidney disease or if you have anemia, there are about 8 out of 10 chances that you need carnitine. 
The reason is not just the diet, it's something called secondary carnitine deficiency. Secondary carnitine deficiency is actually the main reason why carnitine supplementation was approved by the US FDA as a way to prevent and improve anemia and CKD. Not many supplements are actually approved by the US FDA as a way to improve conditions related to CKD. And the reason why carnitine is approved is, well, because it really works. The reason why it works is a symptom of carnitine deficiency called erythropoietin resistant anemia. Most people with CAD are actually deficient in carnitine. Carnitine metabolism is altered in those with kidney issue. Not to mention that this nutrient is only present in animal based foods. This is why, in studies on CKD patients, L-carnitine has been shown to be effective as adjunctive treatment of anemia. This supplement also has other benefits. It can help with hypertension and sugar levels. Now, if you are considering this supplement, please get informed about it. And I've talked more in depth about anemia and carnitine in my video up here. Number two, let's take a look at one of the most powerful combination of supplements I've ever seen. This is what scientists are starting to consider a surefire way of improving GFR and other markers quick in most people. A combination of selenium and CoQ10. This is something a team of Swedish scientists come up with and it's a proven way to lower creatinine levels. In their study, those who took selenium and cocutane were able to improve their GFR by an incredible 14 points. So yeah, they found a powerful way to do more than slowing down the progression. Because while taking either cocutane or selenium seems to really help, coupling these two key nutrients is even better. It seems to work for a very large number of CKD sufferers. The reason? These are two very common deficiencies and both these deficiencies can damage the kidney. Selenium is an essential mineral. Essential means that it's like a vitamin. Having too little of it will cause symptoms and health problems, especially kidney problems. A deficiency in this mineral has been linked to a faster decrease in GFR, even in the general population. And we used to get plenty of selenium in our diets, but today the soil is so depleted most people would actually benefit from a supplement. Now, cocutane is not technically essential. The body can make it, but production starts to decline in people who are 50 years old or more. Now, something else that's supposed to decline when you are 50 years old or more is your GFR. And while obviously CoQ10 deficiency is not the only cause, we know today that many of the conditions that are often associated with aging are also associated with a lowered production of CoQ10 in the body. CoQ10 can protect the kidneys in many ways. It fights inflammation, it has been shown to significantly lower both diastolic and systolic pressure, and, well, it was even studied as a way to get stage 5 sufferers out of RRT. And while both these molecules alone are very powerful, there is an essential interplay between Q10 and selenium that is determining for normal cell function in the kidneys. This is why scientists were able to achieve a huge success when using both these nutrients together. What they use in this study is selenium yeast, 200 micrograms per day, paired with coenzyme Q10, 200 milligrams a day. And they got an amazing result, no doubt about it. There is only one thing more powerful than this combination, our number one for today. This is the most common vitamin deficiency that, when addressed, can make all the difference between ESRD and improving GFR. Supplementing this vitamin the right way can lower your proteinuria levels, naturally, among other things. I'm talking about vitamin D. 
Vitamin D is more important for kidney health than we ever imagined. Vitamin D is changed by the kidneys into its active form. This process is less efficient when kidney function declines, and this causes a long list of problems, including kidney and heart damage. What's scary is that about 80% of those with kidney problems have dangerously low levels of this vitamin. Yes, 80% of kidney patients may be able to improve their GFR just by making sure they are getting enough vitamin D. So make sure your levels are in order. If you are not sure, please get informed now about vitamin D. Watch my video up here. And this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all.